made it to Tuesday. <laughs> Hi, you guys. My name is Jesse. I'm with Decker Truck Line. And uh, this is our Q&A Tuesdays here at Decker Truck Line. So we are talking about uh, a couple of things. I do want to address some of the open positions that I had questions on um, earlier. And as well as addressing driver fatigue and healthy or fit drivers. Um, and the definition of fit might be different than some other definitions of fit, but that's what we're going to talk about. So during our live, we do stay on here for about an hour, um, unless you guys are absolutely quiet and have nothing to say, but odds are that's not going to happen. Um, but if you have any questions whatsoever, go ahead and leave it in the chat and we will start answering those for you as soon as possible. Um, you can get a hold of one of the recruiters directly if you want to talk to them on the phone at 888-668-0698. You can talk to Anna or myself or whoever else hops on here as well that will be able to answer some of your questions. And as always, if there is a position that you have questions on and you want to know a little bit more information, obviously give that number a call or you can apply directly online at drivedecker.com. So good morning. Good morning, Anna. Good morning, Amy. Good to have you guys here with us today. So a little sunshine coming in my window. Super jacked about that because it's been ridiculously rainy and gloomy and poo. So today's wonderful. We're gonna, we're jumping on. We're, we're talking about driver fatigue and how you can improve it. So that being, we'll show that. There we go. Um, that being the subject for today. You guys know that uh, basically the definition of um, the fitness or what, what's being gauged on the driver fitness is not only how, you know, your, your weight, um, your whatever. I mean, you think of fitness and you think of, oh man, they are in good shape, but really what the CSA are, is looking for, um, what the DOT is looking for is making sure that you have, are not tired, that you're not overly tired, that you're getting the sleep that you need and that your, your reaction and, um, your re reaction while you're out on the road, you're not having any impaired driving. Those are things that they're looking at. That's what's going to be more considered on the driver fitness than, you know, um, how many curls you can do or how many push-ups or jumping jacks or anything like that. So a little bit different definition of fitness per se. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't be fit and on the road. There's definitely um, techniques that you can do. And we addressed it yesterday, techniques, workouts, regimens, exercises, all that good stuff. We did address it yesterday. If you um, are familiar with Healthy Trucker, uh, healthytrucker.com, I believe, he has got a whole slew of exercises, not only just exercises though, but he's got some great tips on eating healthier, um, finding healthier alternatives in truck stops, which to me is probably um, the biggest obstacle that you guys face out there. Uh, but we have we have resources out there for you if you need them. And of course, if you check, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, do it and then ring the bell so that you don't miss anymore. But if you're not already subscribed, check a look and take a look at all of the videos that we have. We do have a couple workout videos. We do have a couple meal videos that will help. And we also have a couple videos that are just on addressing where to go, where to find healthier food options while you're out on the road. So, and as always, just a reminder, this content is available to you to use on your downtime, to access on your downtime, really not meant to, or and most definitely not encouraged to be seen while you're driving. So please don't be putting it on while you're driving. This is uh, content informational information for you, I guess, that uh, is to be used when you're not driving. Please be safe, don't be distracted. That's my, that's what I gotta say for you. All right, Anna, thank you so much for posting that. So it is healthytrucker.com. And um, Amy, don't be talking about thunderstorms. That's swear words nowadays. <laughs> All right. So healthytrucker.com, that's a good resource to use. Um, there are a whole lot of other ones on there. Really, you can uh, hop onto YouTube and find just a slew of workouts that you can do that are without weights, um, that are, you know, just, just your own body weight that is, I mean, just impressive. You've got squats, you've got pushups, and there's so many different variations of push-ups. Have you guys ever seen those push-up boards? Uh, they're about this big. I may have two. They're, <laughs> they're, they're about this big and they're color-coded. So you're working your, your chest, uh, your back. And, I mean, there's, there's like nine different positions. Some of them come in like uh, 17, 17 different positions. Anyways, 
I mean, you can work all different muscle groups just with push-ups, uh, using your core, lots of, uh, you've got lunges and squats and, you know, improving your physical fitness is, is not only going to improve your, um, maybe the way that you sit and you stand while you're in the truck, but it's also going to help you sleep better. And you're going to hopefully choose better meal choices. And actually, by choosing better meal choices, you're probably going to feel better all the way around. Best medicine, besides sleep, best medicine is um, eating whole foods. And so that's that's what we're going to talk about is uh, just making sure that you're, you're eating cleaner um, and you're aware of what you should and shouldn't eat based off of how your body reacts to it. Some people can eat dairy. Some people can't eat dairy. Um, a certain certain um, fats, uh, coconut oil is for most people really good. Um, MCT, coconut oil. Um, all, not all of us, I wanted to say avocados. There we go. Avocados are fantastic for you. You know, having an avocado in the morning, you're not only getting the right fats that you need to help burn your inner fat, but it's also helping to with your digestive system. So, and they're very filling. So those are, those are great. Um, one thing that I mentioned yesterday, which I thought was super interesting. Um, I read this, uh, I don't know, last week or a week before, but uh, macadamia nuts are fantastic, a fantastic snack because they are lower in carbohydrates than most nuts. And I had no idea. In all honesty, I didn't realize that nuts had carbohydrates. I just thought they were protein. So look what I learned. Fantastic. Sharing my knowledge. <laughs> all right. So um, when you're at a truck stop, when you're going through the aisles and you're trying to find something yummy and um, healthier to eat, look for look for like the basics, the raw. So when you're if you're going to go for nuts, almonds, cashews, um, macadamia nuts, look for the raw, the raw options instead of um, sugared or salted because a lot of times when they use the salt they're not using sea salt which is sea salt is is true salt is is healthy salt for you whereas most salts are like um uh magnesium and and those are those aren't you know those aren't good for you but sea salt is fantastic for you and i was trying to think actually with sea salt um they do suggest that you put some sea salt if you guys ever heard of bulletproof coffee Right? Is that what it's called? Bulletproof coffee, um, which is like a little bit of uh, in, in the beginning, it was more just butter, clean butter and putting it in your coffee. So something with caffeine and a fat. So a healthy fat, uh, avocado oil, MCT oil and butter. Um, and then in put that into your your caffeine, your coffee for the day. So it sounds nasty. It's actually pretty good. That's actually what I had today, um, except I don't drink coffee, it's tea, but with caffeine. And then that helps to not only regulate you, but burn your um, burn fats. So those are fantastic, fantastic starters for the morning. Um, light snacks, though, going through the aisles, you're looking for just raw food instead of, um, you know, like, so you're looking for bananas, as long as you don't have a, a high blood pressure or a high sugar um, problem. It, you're looking for apples or um, oranges. Again, if you've if you've got diabetes or sugar, then those are actually three fruits that you'd want to avoid and stick more with the berries, like blueberries, uh, strawberries, raspberries. Those those the berries themselves are going to have a lower glycemic index, and then say oranges or or bananas, which are quite high. Um, but a better alternative than than many, many other options that you can choose going down those aisles. Um, and again, like I said, some people can have dairy, some people can't. And uh, those are those are other things that you're gonna be seeing. Try to avoid um, processed foods at all times, anything that has um, uh, any, what do I wanna say, preservatives. Those are, those are things that are going to slow down your digestive system. And even though they say healthy, on the package, I don't know how they can do that, but anything that says healthy on the package probably isn't healthy for you unless it's 
raw. So you need to look at the ingredients. Of course, I didn't bring anything in here. But you need to look at the ingredients and make sure that you know how to pronounce and you know what everything is that's in your whatever you're eating, your food. Um, so, okay, that's my advice to you. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. A light snack before bed might help you achieve a little restful sleep. That's true. And sleep is super important. Sleep is not only important to have a more, you know, to ha have a better reaction time um, so that you're not drowsy, um, you, you know, you're not impairing your driving, but it also helps to, to make better decisions. I mean, you're, if you are lacking sleep, you're more likely choosing unhealthy food options than if you are caught up on sleep, if you want to call it that. But if as long as you are um, managing your sleep well and getting enough sleep, which is usually seven to eight hours a day for well, minimum, if you're getting seven to eight hours a day minimum, you're more likely to choose healthier food options and be more in control of your diet than someone who's not getting the amount of sleep that they need. So those are, I mean, besides just the the basics of drowsiness, um, and, you know, the assumed basics of not getting enough sleep, um, slower reaction time and drowsiness, not remembering or not learning in taking the information like you would if you were getting the proper sleep. There's a reason that the teachers would tell us, make sure you get a good night's sleep before your test so that you're, you're sharp, you're on the ball. Short naps, they can be effective. Um, they're actually more effective than caffeine itself. So I did say caffeine is a great way to start. Um, not everybody's body does caffeine. And um, caffeine later in the day can be detrimental to your sleep because it'll, it'll interrupt your sleep, um, cause issues. So starting off the day with caffeine is one thing, um, but later in the day is a whole different story. So try to avoid excessive caffeine if it hits around 2 to 4 p.m. and you're feeling kind of sluggish, take a nap. 15 minutes, you know, 20 minute nap, that's going to do you more justice than a cup of coffee. A 45 minute mat nap is going to obviously be more effective. Maybe more than that, you're, you're kind of leaning into more of a sleep mode. You know, for the day, you get pretty sluggish, but um, somewhere around 15 to 45 minutes is going to be, be key. Okay. And then obviously other issues, like Anna said here, other other behaviors like smoking and turning up the radio and drinking coffee, opening the window, and um, those alertness tricks, they actually can cause drowsiness. Um, the loud noises, those can be, um, those, and the repetitiveness, um, the bright lights, those can actually make you sleepier and give you the impression that, oh, I'm awake, I'm, you know, I'm doing better, but in all reality, it, it still can wear you down. You really, you need to rest your body. You know, it's not wasting time when you're taking a nap to revive yourself. It's going to be the safe option. And it's a whole lot better to be safe, keeping yourself safe, keeping others on the road safe, keeping the equipment and the load safe, whatever it is, just take a break when you need it. If you are feeling lethargic, if you're feeling um, drowsy, you're just not, not yourself, you need to let your driver manager know. You need to let them know so that they can say, tell you, you know what, go take a break. There's no reason to endanger yourself or anybody else. Go take a break. Ideally, when you are planning your day, you're not going to be running into that type of thing. If you're getting the amount of sleep that you need every night, if you're eating the right healthy foods, then you're, when you wake up, you're not going to have those headaches when you wake up that, that uh, just, I'm trying to think that just that blinding, pounding headache is a sign that you're not getting the, the enough sleep, getting enough sleep, or you're not eating the right foods. Maybe you even have a sleep apnea or another, a sleeping disorder of some sort. So just signs of sleeping disorders are, are um, loud snoring or, um, gurgling or um, trying to think uh, kind of a gasping sound uh, when you when you're trying to sleep or I mean and these are sounds that you probably are unaware of you probably don't recognize that you snore or that you're gasping and holding your breath for seconds on end those are things that you know your your wife or husband might notice but you 
probably won't. Uh, if you're tired after you're done sleeping and you're just exhausted and lethargic, um, I mentioned the headaches. That's another one. If you're if you're having a hard time remembering things, um, those are all those are all signs that you might have, well, that you have a sleeping disorder and more specifically sleep apnea and sleep apnea can be um, cured with a couple of different, or there's a couple different remedies, I guess you've got the CPAP machine. So a uh, CPAP machine is what the um, pathway, I'm trying to think what, what does CPAP stand for? The positive airway pathway or something positive airway pressure. Is that right? Something like that. Positive airway pressure. Anyway, CPAP machine. That's what I'm. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so a CPAP machine is is one cure. Um, some people have to have surgery to cure it. Um, and because there's a lot of dentists notice if you have sleep apnea, they can notice be, depending on how long they've been in the industry and what their studies are. But um, it could be additional redness in the throat. But um, so surgery can be one. Um, there's, there are mouth guards out there that can help. There are some nose, um, products out there that you can put on your nose as well that can help. Uh, they can help with snoring, but not necessarily, um, great for opening up the airwaves. There are some, there are some al alternatives, but, uh, the best ones are going to be the CPAP machine, which come in several different headgears and, um, and they're not loud like they used to be if that's a, a big concern of yours. And there's different ones that you can choose from to provide the most comfort so that you are getting a good night's sleep. Um, not only just getting the air, but also relaxed and, and comfortable when you're getting a good night's sleep. So um, weight loss is another one. You guys notice that you snore more as you gain weight. Uh, you think it's because you're getting older, but more most likely it's because you're gaining weight. Uh, when you're having your DOT physical, it's pretty common that they measure your BMI and your neck to determine if you um, if you could possibly have sleep apnea. And if that point, then they would measure your oxygen intake to determine if if you're getting enough oxygen. So those are all things that that can um, they're treatments basically for the for uh, sleep apnea. I saw something on here earlier. Oh, great comment. So Anna had mentioned that uh, it is, we, there's so many studies done on sleep. I mean, it, there, there's book upon book anymore about sleep and how the, and what the benefits are. And, and growing up, you always remember your mom or dad saying, just go to bed. Oh, you're cranky. Go to bed. You're irritable. Go to bed. You know, you'll, you'll feel better. Whatever that pain was that you're feeling so often sleep is going to solve it. So if you are awake for 18 or more hours, I think it actually, some studies are saying 17, some of them 18, but um, 17 or more hours, consecutive hours, then that is comparable to being your blood, to having a blood alcohol content of 0.05 or more. Being up 18 hours or 17, whatever, and have blood alcohol. So you are, that's impaired driving. That is, that's drunk driving, you know, just drunk on too many hours versus drunk on alcohol or whatever. But either way, it, they're still driver fitness. Both of them are ranked under the driver fitness and avoid them. Um, if you were awake 24 consecutive hours, awake, working, um, your mind is active, the, those that's going to be comparable to having a 0.1 blood alcohol content level. Uh, crazy, crazy on, on how that measures out. And did you know that, that with, um, uh, insomnia, there's, there's lots of, uh, percentages here about a third of Americans have insomnia. Is that impressive to you guys? I, that's totally impressive to me. Not in a good way. Just why, why is that percentage so high? 33% of all Americans have insomnia and odds are those who haven't uh, the, that's just the general public. So the odds are that, uh, our commercial drivers probably have even are probably even a higher percentage. I mean, if you think about that, that is that's scary for one. Um, and how are you going to have the reaction time? How you know if you're getting in, if you're if you have insomnia, what what stops you from going down the road and then all of a sudden you're so exhausted 
you pass out or you, you just fall asleep. Just brief. It only takes that. And it's hard to recognize it on yourself. So we do have our smart drive system is part of our of all of our trucks. Our trucks are nice. I don't know if you guys have seen them. We've got fantastic trucks. They are well equipped, all kinds of safety features, as well as amenities, you know, refrigerator, bunk heater, and APU, inverters, uh, CB units, microwaves, Epic TV. We, we're installing all of those in the trucks as well. Um, but my point is, that we have part the smart drive system in our truck. So we have both the inward out and outward facing event recorders. Did you know that had it not been for one of the, the smart drive inward facing event recorders, when a driver had gone onto the side of the road, we would not have known that he had a sleep issue and we were able to help him take care of that sleep issue. Um, who we who would have known? He's exhausted. You you've got to know your body. You've got to get the sleep. And uh, if if you're feeling lethargic, don't man up in and go overboard. If you need to take care of yourself, do it. There's a lot of people out on the road. You're on the road. I'm sure your family wants you to come home safely. So be smart and don't don't just be all macho and and not say anything, and then put yourself or somebody else in danger. So driver fatigue, a serious issue, and often overlooked. So you guys need to always take that kind of stuff into consideration. But my point is those, if it was not for that inward facing camera, um, the what happened would have been unknown. And here we, we were able to find that out because it was triggered. It was a critical event that was triggered. and. For that matter, over 13%, and depending on the year, because some of them, some of uh, the percentage I was seeing, seeing from 2005 up until now, um, well, actually, the last study was in 2018. But um, some of the studies I was seeing of 13 up to a quarter, 25% of fatal crashes were all caused by fatigued drivers. Whether and that's not necessarily those aren't just commercial drivers. That's the general public. Um, commercial drivers an even higher percentage. The the commercial drivers were closer to that twenty five percent. For fatigued drivers, you need to get your sleep. Just you know, slapping yourself across the face a couple of times or getting rolling down the windows. Those are just temporary fixes. Walking around the truck that helps for a moment. But if you get the rest, if you take a nap, I know it sounds funny, but take a nap. Get yourself in the right frame of mind. Right frame of mind where you can react better. Um, you, you, your slower reaction lead up to where they should be, um, that you're not having the impairments and the difficulties reading or whatever else um, you might need to be doing. Okay. So distractive driving um, comes into play as well when it comes to not having you know, or, or being fatigued, you know, because you've got those impairments, you, your slower reaction, this is, all of that um, comes into account. So, okay. All right. Off that, off that one. <laughs> there are uh, different sleep, um, different sleep uh, disorders besides just the, the sleep apnea too. Um, I did mention the insomnia, but uh, less restless leg syndrome. Those are all things. All those things can keep you up. And really, seriously, the right foods can help to manage those. Sometimes it's difficult and it's a process to find those right foods, but that's when you might need to go see a nutritionist or see your doctor and they can um, put you, lead you in the right direction for that. Okay. Quite amazing what, what natural food can do. And create um, several different books that I've gotten. Um, I mentioned yesterday as well. Dr. Hyman is a wonderful doctor. I've gone through uh, several of his books. He's got Eat Fat to Get Thin, uh, the Ten Day Detox. But um, oh, what's the one? On, there's uh, he's got several on blood sugar levels um, and diabetes. So there's there are so many books out there to help reduce. And really, the gist of it is eating healthier, non-processed foods, uh, for the most part, is what he is 
he, he is guiding you to do. And there are some things that he's taking out of your diet and then he'll kind of ease back in so that you can see if there is a food out there that is triggering um, maybe issues with your sleep or um, speeding up your heart or, you know, like causing, causing you any problems whatsoever. Okay. Yes. Processing, processing things when you're sleepy is a lot slower. You're struggling. Um, reading is another one. You know, when you're just doing something, uh, not, not necessarily monotonous, but, but it possibly monotonous, but just, you know, a slower pace. Um, you, you just, it's putting you to sleep. Things are putting you to sleep. Um, knowing when you absolutely cannot drive, what time, what time within that, in a 24 hour day, can you not, can you not be awake? When is that detrimental? Personally, if if I'm awake after 1030, my body is is just recovering all day the following day. Even if I were to sleep in an extra half hour or whatever, uh, that my body is constantly trying to recover from that later time period getting to bed. That's the other thing. Um, the I'm trying to think uh, what study it was, but they were talking about how the hours before midnight are crucial in getting a good night's rest versus the hours after midnight. And as an over the road driver, you're running into that kind of stuff quite often. We've got customers that are delivering in, you know, at two to four in the morning, you've got customers that are um, usually the, those are the deliveries, but uh, when you're planning your day and your day to make sure that you have a full restful sleep and there is a 10 hour, 10 hour birth, 10 hour sleeper birth that you're supposed to be scheduling in there. Get the rest that you need. And, and if you're driving through the night, our bodies are, our bodies clocks are naturally um, geared to sleep at night. So if you're, if you're having to drive at night you need to get that much more rest during the day is especially um, in the afternoon, it, it's hard for our, our bodies to, to be awake during that time period. Um, what, what did I just saw? Sorry. And I just was reading something you had put on there. Oh yes. So authors hypothesize that the drivers may be affected by sleep inertia shortly after waking from sleep. So you need to give your time at least 15 minutes from when you wake up to when you're, you know, full on driving, make sure you've got your pre-trip. So you've always got your pre-trip to do. You know, that's going to give you a good 15 minutes beforehand. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Even more so for um, driver over the road drivers who are sleeping, um, you know, who who's spend the night in the sleeper. I got to talking and I didn't read a lot of these comments. So I just want to make sure that I'm not missing anybody's. There you go. All right. That's right. Um, looks like we're good. So Anna's put a lot of information out there for you too. That'll help. Uh, there are a lot of studies out there on alertness and, and driver fatigue and, and protecting yourself. So please take time to, to read through some of those to help improve that. Okay. I did want to answer a couple of questions that I had on um, a couple of, a couple of additional videos that we had. Um, oh, and I, yeah, before I move on to that, um, code, code, cold pills, um, just, you know, when you're trying to fight a cold, you're usually using antibiotics a lot of times or um, just the cold medicine. And most of those medicines have drowsy features, even, you know, with the non drowsy, you still have um, can become even more drowsy with using those. So that's why I say it's less or it's more important to prevent than it is to um, try to, to fix once it's happened, you know, so if you're eating healthier foods, and you're eating whole foods, uh, you're working more on a prevention method than you are on a quick fix. Like we said, rolling down the windows or turning up the radio, those are quick fixes, and they're not going to last. But if you're eating healthy, and you're getting the amount of sleep, those are long term fixes. 
long-term solutions, right? So avoid, avoid those and know the signs of being fatigued. Know those and stay true to it. Um, oh, I wanted to address, somebody was asking me about a Chicago uh, a Chicago availability, what we have out of there for weekly home time. We actually have, um, so I'm totally transitioning, so bear with me. <laughs> I wanted to talk about some of the open positions that we had available. Um, so we've got a uh, weekly home time in our van, our refrigerated and our flatbed division. So if you are looking for even more home time, uh, then we do have a flatbed division that runs home daily if you're in the Hammond. Chicago area, Hammond, Indiana area. Um, it's home daily. It usually starts at nine to midnight, somewhere over there. So it is a lot of night driving. So again, crucial on scheduling yourself to make sure that you're getting a proper night sleep, a full night's sleep or a full day's sleep in this case, um, so that you're doing a, you know, your reaction time and everything else is up to where it needs to be. Um, planning your day can be crucial, not only for making sure that you're going to be, your load's going to be on time, but also to make sure, I need a foot rest, sorry, um, but also to make sure that you, if you need a 15 to 20 minute break, you've got that, that time scheduled in, um, that you know when you're going to take your meals. When you're going to eat your meals can be important because then you're, you know, it's obviously going to help you stay awake, help you to be more alert, um, but you're going to be you're gonna have the right nutrition and it's gonna keep you fueled properly to function properly, you know, have that alertness, have, have a faster um, uh, reaction time. Uh, remember things, you know, nutrition is key. Sleep and nutrition, you guys, pounding that into you right now. There we go. All right, so to answer your question, let's talk about that Hammond load. That Hammond, Indiana load um, runs basically well, it pays per load, but it runs basically back and forth from um, Hammond to East Chicago, back to Hammond. Um, that's the first load. It pays $125 for the first load in a day. If you're getting a second load or even a third load a day, it's going to be $150 for any load after, you know, second, third, whatever. Um, it's usually, it's about 75% of the time um, we'll have two loads on that per day. But again, it starts between nine and midnight. And it's Monday through Friday. So coming home Friday, you're actually coming home Saturday morning, um, getting off the uh, getting off that shift. So Monday through Friday and um, starts around nine to midnight. So make sure that if that's something that you're interested in, that you let us know, get a hold of one of the recruiters and you can reach them at 888-668-0698 for more details. Or just apply online, drivedecker.com, if that's what you had in mind, if that sounded like what you were looking for, um, that would, that'll get you there. Uh, the flatbed division that's out of there, though, um, to continue to answer your question, the flatbed um, Midwestern run will get you home on a weekly basis. We actually have a guaranteed pay in that one. That's $13.50 a week. Of course, you can make more than that. Uh, you just need, obviously, to get more miles. So if you're... The 1350 is the base. That's like your, your safety net. And you need to have 100% on-time delivery, be available for dispatch, no driver service failures, and get your paperwork in. Those are the requirements for the uh, guaranteed pay. That's it. Um, and then if you don't meet one of those requirements, then obviously you would revert back to the pay per mile, which in the flatbed division would be anywhere from 44 to 54 cents a mile. Uh, 10 cents of that's per diem, so you're not taxed on it. And then um, that would be times whatever miles you ran that week. Now, 1350 pretty good for, for being home weekly, you know, being home on the weekends and and um, possibly even through the house, but definitely home on the weekends. Okay. Uh, but we also have some short haul if you live in, well, not so much in the Chicago. So let me continue on the Chicago. We've got um, anywhere from Lincoln, Nebraska to Gary, Indiana, Chicago area. We've got home weekly in our van position. And then we also have uh, the guaranteed pay in our refrigerated division, which is also out of our Midwest. So it, it's up and down the Midwest towards the East a little bit, but most of it's going to be in that upper Midwest. Hey, Jackie, good to see you, bud. Um, so most of it's in the upper Midwest and that one pays $12.50 a week. Most of our drivers on that division, they're making more than that on a weekly basis. 
And that's because they're making, they're running more miles and on their pay per mile, the reflection of that is obviously more than what that 1250 is. So we love to see that. So continue to do better. Uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job. But that's, again, those requirements are 100% on time delivery, being available for dispatch, no driver service failures, and having your paperwork in. I think I said all of those. So those are the requirements for our guaranteed pay divisions. Um, that is out of Chicago area. I had one other one that I was, oh, Tifton. Tifton, Georgia. If you have flatbed experience and you live close to Tifton, you know, I'm talking like 25 miles, we do have one available position, just one, and it's for Conestoga. So we do require that you have flatbed experience. So there's one thing. To qualify for this, you have to have flatbed experience and you must live close to the Tifton area. Now, additional qualifications, and this is going to run company-wide. Um, the rest of the qualifications are that you, you can't have any major moving violations in the last three years. You cannot have any major DOT reportable accidents in the last three years. Um, no more than two minor moving violations in the last 12 months or three in the last three years. And no more than two minor incidents like backing or uh, right hand turn, you know, things like that. Those are minor incidents. No more than two of those in the last 12 months and no more than three in the last three years. So those are things that could disqualify you from any of our positions. But for the Tifton one, in addition to those qualifications, you have to have flatbed experience. And of course, you need to be in the right area. If, it's, if we don't have that available in your area, then we wouldn't be able to help you. So if you fall under all of those and you're interested in a home every other day um, run, it is guaranteed 750 is the, is the um, bottom shelf there for you. That's your your safety net, seven fifty a week uh, for that Tifton Conestoga dedicated position, which requires what? But just one more time, I wanted to say that. <laughs> and you would run a lot of um, Georgia, of course, uh, Alabama, Northern Florida, Southern South Carolina, a little bit of Tennessee, um, and it's usually home every other day on that one. So just one, just one, just one. Um, also, Bessemer, Alabama, we have a local position there. So you do need to live in Bessemer for that position or well close by. It starts at 7 a.m. normally. So 7 a.m. to um, Monday through Fridays, and it pays $17 an hour. So flatbed experience required on that one as well. Now, we do train for flatbed. So if you have driving experience or maybe you're even a student, uh, just graduate graduated from a PTDI certified school, like a school with 160 hours or more, then yes, we do train for flatbed, but both the Tifton and the Bessemer positions, those are ones that we require the experience. So those are gonna be exceptions to what we'll train for. All right, um, ju yeah, just one spot for that, that Bessemer as well, just one. All right, cool. Um, <laughs> Any other questions on those positions? Any, any? Okay, we, I did mention, and I'm bumping right back up to that Midwest though. Uh, we do have the, um, the, let's see, Midwest short haul. That's the word I wanted, short haul. That one is running, um, if you live in the Sioux Falls area, um, obviously Fort Dodge, um, Kansas City, Missouri and Omaha. Those are areas that we do hire for the short haul position, which basically means that you're running that upper Midwest, the, that real confined area. A lot of um, Iowa and Illinois, Indiana, Minneapolis, uh, Missouri, or Minnesota, Missouri. Um, those, are, those are areas that you'll run quite a bit in that short haul position. And that one actually is going to have a guaranteed pay as well. That guaranteed pay for the short haul uh, which will get you home about every other day, um, sometimes, well, multiple times a week, and then home on the weekends. That one's paying $1,000 a week, same requirements, 100% on-time delivery, being available for dispatch, no driver service failures, and getting your paperwork in. Anna, you just sent a bunch of them all at once. Good. There we go. Awesome. See, there you go. She's got all that information right there for you, so you know who to talk to. Give a recruiter a call. She's giving you a few different um, videos so that you can get more explanation on those positions. So you've got a little bit more details on them. Um, but that one, this short haul position, this short haul flatbed that's out of the Midwest, 
That one actually gets you home every other day. It pays a thousand dollars. And then of course, if you are not, um, uh, if you, if you don't meet the requirements for the thousand dollars, which on time delivery, no driver service failures, um, being available for dispatch and getting your paperwork in. Couldn't remember that one. Um, that one is, those are the requirements for that thousand dollars. So, um, if you don't meet them, then you'll get the pay per mile instead. Okay. Last year, uh, the gross for that short haul position for us was around $800 a week. Well, with our guaranteed pay, we've obviously bumped that up um, about a couple hundred so that you are, you're guaranteed that, that thousand dollars. Getting home every other day and having that kind of guaranteed pay is phenomenal. I don't know if you guys have been searching or if you've looked at some of the different options out there, but that is a fantastic combination. I don't need to tell you though, you can see that. <laughs> All right, cool. Any other questions on those? Nope. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Anna, for posting those because now you know um, you can get a little bit more information. Our YouTube, like I said, our YouTube channel has got all that information on there. Make sure that you're subscribing so that when we do relay more information, whether they be industry updates or policy updates um, or new opportunities, that you're getting your hands on those so that you'll be notified as soon as those are out. Um, in addition to that, I do want to remind you that on Mondays at 4 p.m., we also have a um, live event on our Facebook channel. If you follow us on Facebook, you'll also be notified of those as well. So make sure that you're you're getting those. Um, I do have a couple of different positions or a couple of uh, local positions, I should say, out in the West. Um, let me rephrase that. Not local, but more regional. That's what I should have said. So those regional positions, if you live in Missoula, Montana, I've got one that'll get you home weekly. And you're running basically the Northwest to... You know, maybe as far as uh, Sioux Falls, for the most part, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, um, those or Rapid City area. That's the majority of where you'd be seeing those runs. We also have um, Kennewick, Washington, Seattle, Washington. I've got uh, one available out of there in both of those locations. Those will get you home weekly. If you're wanting information on that, just get a hold of a recruiter home weekly and you'd be obviously running a more confined area. So you're not running a whole ton of the West out towards the East. So shorter length of haul, most definitely. So a different style running than our over the road refrigerator that's based out of Missoula. You'd still be based out of Missoula, Montana, but uh, different type of runs than our over the road drivers are running for that. And if you're living in Los Angeles, California, I've got one for you there too. So that one's the one out of California is more of I-5. Um, maybe into Nevada or Arizona a little bit, but mostly up and down the I-5, um, seeing some of Oregon and Washington and Idaho or California for the most part. All right, cool. That's right, 888-668-0698. Cool beans. Awesome. All right, any other questions on those? All right, so those are the ones that I that I wanted to address that I only had maybe one or a couple of positions available in. So if you're interested in a move quickly, because they're, it's, it's not something that we're constantly recruiting for, um, those are ones that I only have a, a small handful or one <laughs> individual position available for. So that's those are the ones that you're definitely gonna need to get a hold of a recruiter and talk about and make sure that you're gonna fit within those guidelines and that we are gonna fit within what your expectations are. Um, and that's the other thing. When you're talking to one of our recruiters, make sure that you're giving them an idea of what it is that you're looking for so that we can make sure that we're, if, if we can accommodate that we are. And if not, at least you have a good understanding of what we are and what we what we can and what we can't do. Um, and whether or not we would be a good fit for you. So basically let the, the uh, recruiters, your fleet managers, let us know what your expectations are so that we can we can take care of you. Um, if we don't know what exactly it is that you want, if you're hiring on for a position and that's that's the position you're taking, but you're not taking the time to to tell us what you're really wanting out of it, we don't know. And we can't serve you as well if we don't know those type of things, okay? All right, cool. 
Well, you guys, I will be here next Monday, right? Yes, next Monday, which will be, actually, I'll be on Facebook next Monday. Let's get it right. Get it right. Monday, 4 p.m. on our Facebook channel, so make sure you subscribe or follow that one. And then on Tuesday for our YouTube channel, so that you can join us there for that, too. We'll be there. We'll be here. Anna and I, right, Miss Anna? Be here for you guys. All right, awesome. Um, get a hold of one of our recruiters if you have more details, if you have questions and you need more details, that's what I should have said. Um, you can reach them at 888-668-0698. And uh, we do wanna thank you so much, you guys, for taking good care of us and, and being great drivers out there. Um, we do appreciate our, our professional drivers here at Decker. And you guys are doing a fantastic job, continue it. Uh, don't forget, we do have the referral program as well. So if you are interested in making a little bit of extra money, a little bit, it's actually quite a bit of extra money, check out our, our referral program, which is Anna. No yawning. Look at that. That's terrible. Um, take a look at our, our referral program, which is drivedecker.com backslash driver dash referral. No nap time. You should have prepared for this. All right, you guys, you take care. Have a wonderful rest of your day, your Tuesday.